Hello you guys, it is Delancey. Welcome back to my channel. This is the first time I have done a traditional sit down video in quite some time. Also, I don't really know what my backdrop is doing right now. I'm still trying to figure out the best filming spot in this new apartment. I'm currently like in the entryway of my bedroom in an office chair. It makes no sense, but for, for now it'll have to do. So this week's video is going to be a recent reads video. Now in the past I've done monthly wrap ups and that's worked out really well, but right now due to the current flow of my life and my school schedule, it's just not very realistic. I feel like I'll have no books to talk about if I do this every single month. So instead we're going to do videos like this where I talk about books that have just fallen through the cracks over the past few weeks. These are books that I haven't talked about in any of my reading vlogs or for videos where I do certain challenges or themed secret TBRs and maybe I've mentioned them on Goodreads. But otherwise you guys don't really know about them. So those are the books we're going to be discussing today. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first book on my list is Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. This is the first book in what I believe is a four book YA fantasy series. I read this book a long time ago, back during spring break, so March of this year, with my friend Shelby from Grace of Books. This is the story of the island of Fenburn, where every generation a set of royal princess triplets is born, and each princess has a very unique superpower. So once sister is able to speak to and control animals, another one is an elemental, and the third one is able to withstand any type of poison. So these three sisters are raised separately, but when they turn 16, they are brought together to duke it out to the death, and the last princess standing is crowned Queen of Fenburn. And I keep going back and forth wanting to give this book either a 3.5 star rating or a 4 star rating because here's the thing. The world building, the plot, the magic system, the political intrigue is like chef's kiss. I loved all the twists and turns. The romance drama was amazing. I was so impressed with this book in that regard. But my one issue with this book was definitely the writing. I felt like it was so basic and simple, almost flavorless, like where's the spice? And having only read the first book in this series, I feel like this story has the potential to be on the same shock, adventure, and complexity level as something like Game of Thrones, but the writing totally undermines that. Now, thankfully, I do have a friend who has finished the series and she absolutely loved it and she says that although it is a little rough in the beginning each book just builds one on top of the other each installment it gets better and better so I'm definitely interested in continuing the series and picking up the second book I don't know when that will be but uh, we'll see in the future the next book I have to talk about is Emma by Jane Austen yes this is a piece of classical literature and it also fulfills one of my 2020 reading goals I read this back in June because I wanted to watch Watch the latest movie adaptation right around my birthday and the movie adaptation is fabulous so definitely go watch it. This is the story of Emma Woodhouse, beautiful, clever, rich, and single. Emma has not had a lot of hardship in her life and she takes great joy in being matchmaker for all of her friends and family and the story opens when Emma decides that she's going to play matchmaker for her friend and kind of like her sidekick Harriet and she is going to make a match between Harriet and one of the charming young gentlemen in town and of course things don't go as planned and hilarity and romance and witty discourse ensues. I absolutely love this book and I gave it a five out of five stars and I feel like when I have the energy and the time and the mental bandwidth to sit down and read a classic. I always really enjoy it. It's always really fun and it also helps that this was a romance and a comedy and a lot of people would say uh, one of Jane Austen's best novels. The fluff, the grandeur, the passive-aggressive parlor talk, uh, like I said it is so much fun and I also really really love the romance in this one. I will say though it is a little long and with I feel like most classics they can be a little hard to understand at times so my pro tip for anyone who wants to check this book out would be to read along with the audiobook. That is what I did. And I also annotated along the way. You can see I have some colored tabs and I made notes to myself, important plot points, as well as like fun little side notes for myself if I ever choose to reread this again and that really helps. So that would be my pro tip advice to anyone who wants to check this book out or is brand new to classics. But yeah, absolutely love this book. It is definitely going on my favorite shelf. Third on the list we have Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata and this is a quirky little book. This is the story of 36 year old Kiko, a Japanese convenience store woman who has worked at this convenience store for I believe 18 years. And Kiko 
pretty much sees herself as a tool for this convenience store and her whole life revolves around being her best self so that she can best serve the store. That being said, Kiko has always really struggled in life to fit in. She has struggled to fit in with her family as well as with society at large. So working at Smile Mart has in a way given her a sense of peace and purpose and this is the most she has ever felt like a normal person. But at the age of 36, Kiko is now getting a lot of pressure from her parents to marry and she is going to take some pretty desperate action to please those around her and that is pretty much where the story starts and we kind of go from there. I also gave this book five stars because I thought it was a lot of fun. It is weird, it's heartwarming, and it's also funny and I think it is also jam-packed with so much commentary on Japanese society and Japanese social life. I feel like I could write an AP English paper about all the author accomplishes in just a small book. I would recommend this book as a readathon selection or if you are looking to boost your Goodreads count if you're trying to meet your goal by the end of the year because the book is really short. I think it's only like 160 some pages and you are probably going to be so confused and intrigued and engrossed in this storyline that you'll probably read it in one sitting. So like I said, I really enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun. It's quick, it's fast, it's witty. So definitely check it out. I would highly recommend. Next up we have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is an adult literary slash historical fiction novel. This is the story of Stella and Desiree. They are a set of twins that grow up in a small southern black community called Mallard and at age 16 the set of twins decides they're gonna run away from home and from there their two lives could not look any more different. Ten years later Desiree is actually back in Mallard. She's working at a local diner. She is raising her daughter and back living with her mom and Stella ends up passing off as a white woman and she tells her white husband nothing of her past and successfully builds an entirely new life. Now although the twins lives could not look any more different Decades later, their lives continue to remain intertwined when their own daughters cross paths. And this is a story about race, about loneliness, about sisterhood, motherhood, as well as coming to terms with one's own identity, uh, finding a sense of identity, a sense of self. I feel like most people probably know about this book or at least recognize the cover. There was so much hype surrounding it when it first came out and that hype only continues. I think even as of right now, there is a 50 week wait period for the audiobook at my library and I think the hype is totally well deserved. I gave this a 4.75 stars right on the border of a 5 star rating. I loved it. I think it is beautiful, it was thought provoking, and it was uncomfortable but in all the right ways. It really made you think. The characters were vivid and complex and so interesting. I feel like each character, primary or secondary or tertiary, it didn't matter, all characters could easily hold their own spin-off novels. That is how interesting and well-developed they were. I was also really impressed with the author's writing. She writes in a way where it reads smoothly, but she also writes in a way where the characters' emotions and trains of thought really bleed into the third-person narration, which for lack of a better word is just kind of cool. I'm also not a big fan of alternating timelines in books. It's just not really my thing, and Britt Bennett does do that in this book, but she does it so well. Like, it wasn't an issue at all. I loved it. It, Like I said, it's a beautiful book. It's really great and I think everyone should give it a try. Even if it's not really up your alley in terms of genre, it's not up my alley personally. So if you are uncertain and you don't want to buy it, get into the 50 week waiting period over at the library and try it out and I don't think you'll regret reading this. Speaking of beautiful books, I also listened to the audiobook of The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I would classify this as a serious YA contemporary. This book takes place in the 1970s in Alaska, not long after Alaska became a state. And we are reading from the perspective of multiple Alaskan teenagers. So we have Ruth, who has a very personal secret. We have Dora, who has grown up in an abusive family and is trying to seek refuge. We have Alice, who is trying to juggle personal passions with family duties. And we have Hank, who is in the middle of running away from home. And over the short course of this story, Somehow these very different teenagers, their lives become intertwined. I ended up giving this book a 3 to 3.5 star rating. I had heard from other people that this book was very meaningful for them. It really struck a chord with them. It was very touching, very moving, and I could see how that would be for other people, but for me personally, it just 
I just didn't really have the same experience. It was nice. It was a good book, objectively speaking, but I think for me it will ultimately be kind of forgettable in the long run. I will give it credit though where credit is due. Like I said, this is a beautiful book. I pictured these shimmering glaciers and these quaint fishing villages and these colorful starry night skies. You are also reading from the perspective of some of the most poetic fictional teenagers I have ever encountered in literature. Like I said about Convenience Store Woman, I think this is a great book for a readathon prompt. It's short, the audiobook was only four to six hours long, I think, so not a huge investment of your time. Or I would really recommend this book if it is during the winter season and you wanna be in the fields one night over a hot cup of cocoa. I think this is the perfect book for you. Moving into the nonfiction books that I recently read, the first one on my list is How to Be Everything by Emily Wapnick, also known as a guide for those who still don't know what they want to be when they grow up. I would more so say this is a novel for people who have tons of different random interests and they are struggling to build a career for themselves, especially where being a specialist is much more the conventional career path or the more popular ideology that people follow in the workplace. So I will say I think that is quickly changing in today's age. The author refers to this type of person as a multi-potentialite and they break down the variety of different ways multi-potentialites can build fulfilling career paths for themselves as well as how to find the thread that connects all of these seemingly random interests together because believe it or not your so-called random hobbies are actually interconnected. I gave this book a five out of five stars because I do think it succeeds in what it sets out to do. If the term multi-potentialite resonates with you and this kind of sounds like you, I would suggest picking this book up and giving it a try. It is, once again, pretty short, so not a huge investment of your time. My only recommendation would be to not listen to the audiobook, but rather to read the physical book, or if you are going to listen to the audiobook, do so actively and have a pen and piece of paper ready because there are a lot of writing exercises and self-discovery exploration exercises throughout this book and that is going to be crucial and key to getting the most out of this book but I really enjoyed it it gave me some fresh perspectives I think there's a hopeful message in here and if you are somebody who has a lot of interests and you have felt discouraged in the past I think this is the kind of message and the kind of book you need to experience and my final recent read is Kid Food by Bettina Elias Siegel this is a nonfiction nutrition book and it is all all about the challenges of feeding children in a highly processed world. I would say if you have any interest in food policy, in food marketing, in the US school lunch program, or if you're a parent and you just want to learn how to better feed your family, this is definitely a book for you. I picked this book up totally on a whim. I was browsing the library and it was on a shelf and I just went for it. And I'm so glad I did because it truly is a treasure trove of information. I walked away just wanting to learn more, especially about food marketing. I actually have a degree in public relations, so food marketing is just kind of my thing, especially food marketing to children. I think it is fascinating. I gave this book a four star rating because there are parts of it that are tailored to parents. So if you're not a parent, some parts are gonna feel kind of like throwaway parts, but if you have any interest in working in nutrition in the future, especially community nutrition, you definitely wanna check this book out. I actually renewed this book at my library like four times and used it in multiple papers uh, throughout school, especially for my food policy class. If you are someone who wants to work in nutrition or you just want to learn more about this kind of subject matter, then definitely check it out. I would highly recommend it. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of the books that I mentioned today, or just let me know what books you have read in the month of August. I think, yeah, it's September now, beginning of September. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.